Okay, we'll, we'll take questions. Um, I'm going to begin with uh, Sneha. Sneha, go for it. Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Um, in smooth endoplasmic mm -hmm. reticulum, uh, it is rich in enzyme. So, can you tell which enzymes are rich in? Okay, uh, there are many enzymes that are present. If you really want to know, just go look up. Um, I'm not discussing any specifics here. Okay, um, any uh, standard textbook, if you pick up, uh, it'll tell you all the different enzymes that are present there. Some of the enzymes we do know um, and we've characterized them. Uh, many of them are enzymes that actually synthesize uh, lipids, for example. Some might be those that actually uh, modify uh, proteins in ways that allow for them uh, to now be integrated into the membrane or bound to the membrane, allowing for their delivery, right? So, so I'm, I'm not getting into specifics on any of these, but you're welcome to go look this up, right? And the textbooks that you have uh, will tell you a little bit more about what enzymes and what exactly they do, right? Um, Vaishnavi, next question, over to you. Uh, so, uh, different organisms with uh, different requirements would have different Golgi apparatus or uh, the, the contents would vary, right? Would they? So, could you say that again, different organisms as in? Uh, from uh, unicellular to multicellular, the, wouldn't the, would the requirements change? So, would the contents of the Golgi change? At a single cell level, right? Um, the functionality of many of these components uh, is conserved. But depending upon the type of cell that you're looking at, right? Um, and the kind of proteins that are being processed, like for example, uh, the Golgi in a neuron um, may have um, slightly different composition, you know, proteins that it is seeing, enzymes that, um, you know, it um, uses uh, as compared to um, Golgi, say, in the liver. Right. So there will be differences depending upon which cell type you are looking at. Uh, a significant part of the architecture and the mechanisms that are in place are conserved. But the way these mechanisms are used, what kind of proteins are being processed will obviously be different. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, Varad. Sir, I didn't understand the, uh, when you were saying that the forward and the backward movement of protein to the Golgi. Mm -hmm. what, was, mm. what were you really saying? I didn't understand. Right, right, right. So, so the, this is again, uh, um, you know, something that is hypothesized. We don't fully know whether this actually happens. See, the, a challenge with um, a lot of this has been being able to image uh, these structures. Um, so to be able to uh, look at a Golgi or an ER, um, you know, as much as, uh, you know, I showed you images of um, confocal images, uh, you can see their architecture to a certain extent. If you really want to see the stacks of the Golgi, you will have to go to um, something like an electron microscope, right? Um, and one of the challenges with electron microscopy, electron microscopy, initially, the challenge was that you were able to look at only one plane. Uh, plane, um, but now there is um, EM tomography, right? Where you, like you do confocal sections, you can do sections in an EM image and also put the sections together. So the ER image that you saw of, uh, you know, these, um, uh, the parking lot image, right? Uh, is made possible because we were able to, they were able to process a stack of uh, electron microscopy images. The challenge, so the EM tomography has allowed us to see these architectures a little better than we originally did. But the challenge still remains that we can't look at live events as they are happening in EM, right? So it is hypothesized that there are vesicles that are being moved to the front um, and, and they go from, as I said, the one of the hypotheses is that everything just goes through, right? Um, and one hypothesis is that there are actually vesicles that are peeled off from one, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. Um, and it is thought that there are certain uh, vesicles that may also move back. Um, for example, if and how this is controlled, what is the mechanism? We don't know. What decides that something should move forward um, or go back? Uh, we don't know, right? So it's thought that the way they are moved back and front uh, will determine the residency time. Right. That means how long a protein that's in this vesicle stays in this compartment could determine could be determined by how quickly it leaves 
and how often it comes back right so what if there is a forward back forward back that is constantly happening right and um, if all the processing that a protein needs to undergo in this compartment has been done then you know it moves forward and then doesn't come back and then moves further could that be a way of doing this and ensuring that all the changes that are required um, are actually have happened on the protein before it actually leaves so one of the questions here to think about is um, you know what is the regulatory mechanism that looks at a protein what is the quality control mechanism right that looks at a protein and say okay all modifications are done isko jaane do aage right um, or looks at everything and says are this particular modification is still not been done we should send it back to that compartment is there such a you know um, a mechanism to check for the modifications that proteins are undergoing um, and we actually don't know at this point of time we are only just beginning to understand how changes can happen simple things like the amount of time that a protein spends in the compartment could change the architecture of the modifications right so a protein that will take you know i'm just saying these numbers of the top of my head that takes uh, you know 30 seconds 30 seconds 30 seconds will be modified one way a protein that takes 1 minute 1 minute 1 minute 1 minute same protein will be modified differently right this we understood or at least you know we've been able to now model uh, you know use uh, mathematical models to uh, suggest this is possible and this has happened in the last maybe 5 years or so right so we're just beginning to understand the complexity um, and the kind of regulatory mechanisms that exist here okay so i know this isn't much of an answer but um, you know that's where the understanding of the field lies at this point of time right um aditya next question from you uh, sir uh, can you hear me mm mm-hmm. uh, like neurons are really big cells right mm mm-hmm. and they have many synapses mm mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so they have they have they, they will have one synapse they don't make multiple synapses no like at the end uh, let's yes. say uh, oh, yes. they have only one synapse yes uh, also does the synapse have a broken part like a piece of golgi or something a localized golgi so that it's easier for processing to happen before it's released yeah so so whether there is a piece of a golgi that sits right at the end um i don't think there is right so the golgi is here actually these uh, motor proteins carry make they travel long distances in the neuron to actually take things all the way to from one end where they are made to the end that they are actually delivered so um so the way motor proteins work in neurons now uh, is the basis of very extensive studies um, to essentially characterize this right you should look up uh, there is a lab in tifr bombay sandhya kaushika sandhya studies um, these motor proteins and she studies how uh, in uh, cytoskeletal components in neurons uh, things are actually moved how do they bump into each other what is the level of crowding you know how does such a long cell navigate um, you know and carry information right because you know halfway through what if the vesicle forgets where it's going does that really happen right and and how does the neuron maintain that because of the distances it has to travel right so the short answer is there isn't a golgi like structure at the end things move actually long distances in the neuron hmm? okay sir anjali your query Um, so what do we actually mean by processing of the materials in the golgi apparatus like what essentially uh, does the golgi apparatus do right so we saw right one of the big processings that they do is um, uh, glycosylation yeah, sugar addition. Oh. right yeah glycosylation uh, there could be post translational modifications right uh, like for example in some cases proteins need to have lipid modifications right and this allows uh, there are you know um, palmitylations you know it's essentially a chain of lipid that gets attached to the protein at a certain point that now allows the protein to anchor to specific compartments in the cell using that lipid tail those kind of modifications can happen in the golgi uh, you know there could be phosphorylation of a protein that allows it to kind of go um, to uh, or go to a specific compartment or bind something which could happen at the golgi so 
many of the changes are actually at the level of the structure of the protein in the way the protein is put together. Uh, changes like phosphorylation, which are, um, you know, more transient, right? Uh, that can happen quickly and go away quickly, um, happen after all this processing is done. So glycosylation, for example, is a slow modification and, and doesn't kind of go away, right? So the changes that happen in the Golgi kind of stay right um, and stay longer uh, and and those are the kind of changes that happen at the level of the Golgi. so there are many such modifications of the protein which affect the structure and functioning of the protein that happen at the Golgi. also sir uh, when we uh, said that we detach the Golgi apparatus uh, it becomes uh, spherical rather than the normal structure i didn't detach understand that. the Golgi apparatus no that's not the Golgi. that's the cell we are detaching the cell Okay. Yeah. And when we detach the cell, the Golgi breaks up. Okay, that's what I showed. So what was inside the cell is what's what is the Golgi that is broken up. Sneha, your query. Uh, so I have a doubt on smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So how does it catalyze the cell? I don't know what you mean by how. These are enzymes. The enzymes, uh, you know, work on the protein. Uh, like just as, uh, you know, for example, um, enzymes that talk to proteins in the Golgi um, are like other enzymes. You know, they will need a bunch of cofactors. In some cases, they may need energy. Uh, but when they run into a protein that they can modify, they will hold the protein and modify it, right? So, um, so a lot of that happens uh, very intuitively, it re requires a bunch of cofactors, bunch of other players that are required. A protein by itself may not exactly uh, by itself be enough to do this, right? And so that milieu and the environment and what else is needed uh, is actually vital for this. If you're curious, just go look up, um, you know, molecular biology of the cell and how uh, Golgi uh, or ER processing takes place. And, and there is a lot of information there on how enzymes which enzymes and what kind of modifications they can be. Hmm? Yes. And okay. so one more doubt. Uh, you, uh, we, we said that uh, Golgi, Golgi uh, spreads at a certain time. So does it affect... Spreads the cell at, at a time? certain time as in? Did you say spread? But, yes. So as it moves away, as it... And um, it takes hold, it catches up with the whole cell. The Golgi catches up with the whole cell. No, I'm not sure I understood. Can you can you frame that question differently? Why don't you think about what you're asking? And I'll take the other two questions and I'll come back to you, Sneha. Okay, sir. Hmm? Anandita. Sir, so yes. even endoplasmic reticulum can modify the protein, it's just not Golgi. Yes, yes. So there are some changes that can happen at the ER. Um, there are some changes that can happen only exclusively in the Golgi. Um, and the Golgi, now we understand, um, has a much more finessed, uh, you know, and complex mechanism than probably the ER. The ER does make changes. It's not like it doesn't. Uh, but there are some changes that can happen only in the Golgi. And the Golgi-associated changes, um, you know, can be, are, are more subtle in ways that allow uh, or affect the functionality of the protein. Hmm? Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Ajinkya. Okay, we have last two questions. We're so, I have a question. Does the Golgi paradise change its shape for uh, maturing different proteins? Hmm. So, so, I'm not sure it changes its shape to allow for maturation. I think the change in shape might affect maturation. Okay. So I don't think the protein has a say in how the Golgi looks, but there are other things in the cell that will affect the organization of the Golgi. And, um, and that will mean that uh, the protein um, can be modified this way. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so what decides whether like how long a protein stays in the Golgi apparatus? We don't know. We don't know actually. Right, so there could be some signature in proteins that could influence this. Um, you know, for example, if vesicles are go thrown out and then brought back and then go out and then come back again, you know, what is that mechanism? We really don't know. We don't know. Hmm? Deep last query, um, sir. Uh, you said that, uh, in like to study Golgi, we do not know how to take it apart and 
like you know study uh, things separately but mm-hmm. sir like in division it is already taken apart now so why don't we study the golgi apparatus while it is dividing like right right, right. Are... The, the challenge with that is it's a very transient process um and uh, you know the imaging capabilities that we have actually a lot of understanding of how the golgi is broken up uh, you know how it is brought back together has come from the uh, dividing cell uh, but the challenge has been being able to visualize things um, at that stage um, and also being able to catch things as they happen in a dividing cell like we study the dividing cell in the lab and you know just being able to uh, watch the cell in a short period of time can be very challenging sometimes right so a lot yes. of this is limited by actual data being generated right um, uh, and 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 then now asking um, how do we uh, you know look at the data and and then analyze it so challenge has been being able to actually experimentally do things here no ah, okay sneha come back to we come back to your question last question sir i couldn't frame it properly right. but sir in the slides it was it was shown that it it is moves throughout the cell it is what it moves throughout the cell moves throughout the cell so the golgi can move around in the cell right the golgi can open up can can come back together in a migrating cell for example the golgi because it is tied to the microtubules comes to the front of the cell as well right um and when i say front it's not right at the front but if this is the direction the cell is going right the golgi will be here and not somewhere there right that difference uh, we have uh, so the golgi can be um, organized and brought to very specific sites inside the cell to allow um, for it to support you know transport and delivery of uh, vesicles and the components that the vesicles carry right so if that's the question yes it can be moved around inside the cell Okay. Okay. Sir.